Hello, today we're going to talk about sea hairs and green hair algae control. Hello and welcome back everyone to Amber Azul TV. I'm going to give you a little update on my green hair algae situation. So uh, if you uh, watched last week's video, you would have noted that I'm uh, having a, f a few issues with uh, green hair algae taking hold in a couple of places in, the, in my rock work and it's pretty dense. And I was thinking about uh, getting a sea hair and I actually did get one uh, several days ago. I did a very slow drip accl acclimation or about an hour and a half and I released them into my tank or her. And uh, I'm really surprised at the amount of uh, algae that this uh, sea hare uh, has munched over uh, the last couple of days. So here is before and after last week versus uh, this week. And you can see that there is a substantial reduction in the amount of green hair algae on my rock work. So, so far so good. Uh, it's a little bit uncertain whether uh, the sea hare is going to continue with uh, munching all the algae. You know, there is um, some issues of them kind of uh, dying and, and running out of algae but uh, I will I will keep you kind of updated so uh, uh, you see a little bit of uh, the uh, here he is on the bottom here he kind of sleeps during the day and uh, comes out at night to uh, munch algae and uh, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about uh, some uh, confusion about how safe sea hares are uh, to uh, your aquarium uh, again, this is before and after last week versus uh, this week uh, in terms of algae and, and you see that there is uh, substantially less green hair algae in the rock work. So the type of sea hair that most aquarists get is called Dolabella auricularia. And there is a lot of confusion about whether uh, how safe uh, sea hairs are. And if you, um, if you uh, Google uh, sea hares and toxicity, you get a lot of uh, stories about sea hares being highly toxic and, uh, and them releasing uh, this very toxic uh, pink ink or, or purple ink. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, a big problem here is, uh, is uh, the names and, and, and there are many, many, many species and, and actually different genera that are called sea hares. So to say that sea hares are toxic would be the same thing as saying that snakes are venomous or uh, mushrooms are all poisonous. So certainly some snakes are venomous and some mushrooms are poisonous, but you can't uh, just label the whole group uh, as toxic or, or, uh, or venomous. So uh, the same thing goes with sea hares. Uh, based on my research, uh, I've, I've looked a lot at the toxicity of Dolabella in reef aquaria and it, you know if you google it you get a lot a lot of posts of people uh, getting these sea hares putting them in their tanks and the sea hares die so they post saying oh my sea hare died how do i get them from living but i haven't found a single uh, mention of uh, somebody putting the dolabella into their tank having it die and having the death poison uh, the rest of the tank. Uh, there's also a bit of research suggesting that the toxicity of some sea hares comes from the actual food that they eat. So that could be a reason why Dolabella is is not toxic in a reef aquarium is that they're not eating the poisonous algae that they that they need to make the ink. So as far as I'm I'm concerned, I, I think the toxicity of Dolabella is is very low if uh, probably negligible in a, in a reef aquarium at least based on uh, anecdotal evidence of uh, of people trying to have these in their tank having them die on them uh, uh, without any uh, ill effects or, or mass poisoning i'm going to quickly show you some of the other cleanup crew in my tank so i, I have a couple of these uh, gold ring cowries uh, they are they're pretty small so some cowries get really really big uh, these uh, stay tiny and uh, they're nocturnal. I only see them at night. Uh, in the daytime, they hide in the crevices and they come out and they eat the uh, algae and, and they scavenge off the rockwork. So I have a couple of these. I also have a very large army of uh, black-footed trochus snails. Uh, these, I think, are, are great. Uh, I also like the fact that they reproduce in my aquarium. So I've essentially only had to buy them once. I maybe bought a dozen. 
three years ago, I believe, or, or more than three years ago when I started the tank. And uh, they've essentially been re reproducing and, and self-sustaining themselves. I have a few turbo snails, Mexican turbo snails. And these, I think, are, are really good algae eaters. Uh, they do, uh, you know, they, they don't, uh, in my tank, they don't reproduce uh, naturally. And they are a little bit expensive. They're also pretty large, so that they're kind of limited in the areas that they kind of get in. But I think certainly having a few turbo snails uh, is going to be uh, beneficial for your tank. I also have about 10 uh, blue-legged uh, hermit crabs. Uh, these, I, I, you know, I, I always see them kind of busy working, picking at the rocks, and, uh, and they do move ar around a lot. What I don't like about them is they do try, they, they will, like, kind of attack uh, the slower trochus snails and, and get their shells. Uh, they also, they, they are not self-sustainable in that, you know, I'll buy a patch and then after... Uh, after several months there are fewer and fewer i'm not sure whether they just kind of attack each other and and uh, for shells or whether the wrasses kind of uh, find them uh, tasty so i have to repl replenish them quite often and then here is a strawberry conch and uh, he's i've had him for or her for about uh, three years now or actually maybe two years and i i always uh, see the conch kind of moving around on on the bottom uh, scavenging and and uh, eating off uh, uh, bits of algae and i had two tuxedo urchins i i really like tuxedo urchins uh they they you get all the benefits of having a sea urchin in terms of kind of grazing large amounts of algae without the problems of having the sea urchin kind of uh spike you or or misplace things or or, or eat wires so uh the tuxedos i think are, are really good in uh, in reef uh, tanks and then obviously uh i have two other algivores um, in my tank there is the blenny uh, I always uh, see him picking at the rock and, and the glass. He doesn't really like to touch the really long green hair algae strands, but he's always munching and he's got a big fat belly. And obviously, I do have a yellow tank. Although, you know, he does pick at the rocks, he doesn't typically touch the really long strands of green hair algae in my tank. I'm not sure whether I'm feeding him too much. Uh, I mean, I do feed my tank a lot and I, I put algae clips. So I, I think the tank is, is probably getting overfed from uh, the food that I keep throwing in my tank. And, and as a result, he's not uh, doing uh, a, a much more effective job at reducing green hair algae. And uh, so essentially that, that's it. Uh, so far, so good. Uh, the hair is doing a, a good job. Uh, uh, a good number on uh, on the green hair algae. I am concerned that he will run up out of algae, and as a result, I've in my Evo, I've been trying to intentionally dirty it up. And then there's always the idea of me trying to feed him some cheto of uh, that I grow in my refugium. Uh, so we'll see. I'm also uh, I'm still dosing uh, potassium nitrate. Uh, sorry, uh, what is it? Uh, yeah, potassium nitrate. I am I am dosing potassium nitrate. Uh, my my nitrate levels were undetectable, and uh, as I mentioned last week, I, I do like to run with about five parts per million nitrates. I did start. I did dose uh, about a week or a week and a half now, about one mil a day, and my numbers are up. They're about 0 0.05. Sorry, 0 0.5 par, uh, parts per million. So that's good. Uh, one one thing that I'll, I'll uh, I have noticed is that I do I do see a little bit of pop in in the colors of my SPS. I mean, can't really see it from the video here, but it, to my eye, I I do see a little bit more kind of peppiness uh, in terms of uh, uh, just kind of they seem to sparkle a little bit more when I start adding potassium nitrate. Uh, so I'll uh, keep you guys updated with the sea hair and and also with the uh, with the nitrate dosing. And uh, hopefully in, in about uh, a week's time, all the algae will be gone. All right. Thank you so much for watching and see you around.